Hey guys, welcome back on my channel. Today's topic is also another one of these questions I get all the time and it's about um, living alone and how do you get past the loneliness etc etc and do you ever want to get married, why is it that you don't have a partner and blah and blah and blah. So I thought I can make a video about what it's like to live alone and about the whole loneliness thing because I get this in every Q&A that I do but I just feel like uh, eh, we might, you know, add another layer. Now, let's start with the living alone part. I really like it. Um, it's part of my personality that I want to have my personal sp space. The first time that I lived alone was when I went to college and that was at the age of 18. I went to college in another city and uh, the first night was very tough just because I moved to, to my college dorm room and I had absolutely nothing. For some reason, I assumed that they had, you know, these basic things like pillows and covers, etc. So that's the kind of things you don't even think about um, when when you are living with your parents. And um, for me, I must say that I, I, I wasn't one of those people who, when they went to this school, they had done all the due diligence. Because you have a lot of people who come, they do campus visits, they talk to other people because all their friends have their kids already in that college, etc. For me, I it was a bit of a fight just to get into that college, and uh, and so I had never visited before. I've only went there for the test and blah and blah, and so I really didn't know what student life would be like. And I remember spending my first night with no linens, no pillow, nothing, and just you know being like that and trying to figure out what I was gonna do next. Things got better afterwards, of course. But uh, definitely the first uh, the first week was a bit tough. I didn't have enough money and and it was yeah, it was a bit of a learning experience. So a lot of the other students actually had brought linens and their food, etc, etc. And so they were already in a cozy setup. And whereas for me, even though I spent what five years in that college, I never had my pictures on the wall or, or things like that. I think the most personalization I had done to customize my room was actually bring some um, some teddy bears kind of thing uh, and it wasn't because I needed to sleep with these things it was just like a decoration but that was the the maximum that I did in my room. Um, the reason why I talk a lot about this is that that uh, kind of shaped my perception of what it's like to live alone and that's why I'm very prepared for everything else afterwards. So after I finished college, I eventually went back to my parents and then that didn't last long. I realized I couldn't live with my parents again after living alone for so, for a few years, right? And so I ended up getting my own place. I was working in Casablanca, so I got my place in Casablanca. Um, normally, in here, I don't want to get, you know, uh, fine. You always start a shit storm in the comments because people think you might be given the wrong idea about your country or whatever. But here it is. I I gave my own experience from what I have seen. The fact that you might have had a different experience does not uh, invalidate mine. And let's just keep it at that, right? Because sometimes people say, no, this not, doesn't happen, etc. Just because their experience is different, but fine. But from my experience, most of the of the of the women of the girls who were in my in my entourage let's say if they worked in the same city where their parents lived they were almost by default living with their parents so it was almost it was quite difficult for a girl to get her own separate apartment in the same city as their parents so if you live in Rabat which is where i'm from then you're i just realized this job is pretty low cut but fine if you are in from Rabat and your parents are in Rabat and you work in Rabat, you're probably living with your parents. Again, there are exceptions, but I'm just talking about my social circle. That's what happened. For me, I worked in Casablanca, which is an hour away by train. And so I ended up getting my own place. And it was a very brand new apartment. So when I went there, it was another level uh, of bareness versus what, uh, what I had seen in college. Because... Now, in that apartment, they didn't even have light bulbs. 
and so I didn't even think about that. Luckily for me, my father is an overpacker. He's not an overpacker, but like he's an overthinker and he likes packing and things like that. So he had his list, mental list of everything that he needed and he brought in boxes and boxes of things. They were obviously secondhand things from home and he just kind of stacked everything. So from salt and pepper to some mismatched plates, to some super old linen, but at least I had everything to, you know, get started. And that was really amazing. I must say the second time around was just great. I had my own place. I invited my friends. I remember uh, it took me, it took me at least, it took me like four years to just start having furniture and actually I only had a living room like a sofa after I left my apartment because my sister stayed there uh, that's when I started having a sofa that's when I finally had chandeliers and things like that but in the meantime I remember the first meal that I did I invited all my friends and they had to eat on the floor and uh, it took many many months until I had a table and that dining table was actually a gift from a friend who was staying at my place while her her apartment was being renovated so I really love living alone. Again, when I traveled here, I obviously they were alone. A lot of people were telling me, why don't you get a roommate, you know, a flat share? And that's because a lot of the, the people who started consulting here are straight off of college. And so when they're in college, they, some of them already live in flat shares. And then when they move into consulting, they still live in that in that mindset so they still have all their friends they still have all the parties and things like that for me i've been living alone for so long there is no way i'm gonna go back to you know to just uh living with other people i mean if you've been living alone for 10 years it's very very difficult to to just start having a roommate um so i ended up living by my own here again i come there is nothing so i would say the part of planning what you need is the toughest one that's why if you were to live alone just be prepared to 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 know that there are some things that typically other people in your household will think about but you don't um, and so in terms of um, furniture in terms of setting up etc etc it can be a bit daunting on the upside you do whatever you want if like me you want to live for four years in an apartment and not have a sofa it is your call. If you one day come back late from work and you don't want to do the dishes, yes, it's not the best thing ever, but it's your decision, right? And it's you taking responsibility for that versus having a roommate living, I don't know, some live cultures in a random petri dish uh, in your fridge. So I really like that fact of having everything that is moved, even if it's out of place, by me. And so that's that's really nice because then everything matches your aesthetic everything matches your lifestyle and that's really something that i enjoy now on the part where some people say do you feel lonely i am very weird in the sense that i don't really feel lonely ever i like my personal space and so whenever i want to go and meet people i will go and meet people like i have brunches i love brunches so for me the best time to catch me is actually for brunch so if you really want to have the best version of uga you do brunch or you do afternoon tea and you got my undivided attention. I don't do well in, in, in dinners. Uh, a lot of people like to do after work drinks. I'm not really about that life. So um, I can be pretty boring and morose person if you try to get me after work. But brunch or, or tea, I'm always down. So I do that and then I get my social interaction. People don't have to come to my place and hang out at my place or live with me for me to not feel alone. Some people mostly feel alone when they're sick, which is a natural feeling. Uh, you know, when you're like crying on, in, your, in your bed and you're thinking, I'm gonna die alone and nobody's gonna find me, etc., etc. But uh, luckily, that doesn't happen often, I guess. Uh, I mean, I don't know, it depends on, on your health status, but these are exceptions, right? And you can always call a friend or, you know, everything good or bad ends up just passing by. Everything, good or bad, has a start and an end. So I wouldn't make a life choice of living with people just based off of some exceptional events, unless you have a specific condition and you really need constant monitoring. And in that case, what you're looking for is not a roommate, but a caretaker. Um, what else? 
the the other question I get is about whether or not I miss being in a relationship or with a partner. Now, honestly, I have a lot to work on on my side, and I really love the self introspection. I love the self discovery, and I haven't settled. That's the thing. I don't think that uh, being a consultant in Brussels is my end point, and this is not meant to be a diss to all people who get married at 18 or to their high school sweetheart or anything like that but for me I just feel like I haven't reached my prime and if I had settled for a relationship in my 20s then I would have probably gotten with the best person I could be with for the best person that I was in my 20s but looking at myself in my 30s I'm completely different and I'm not really sure that that would have been the best thing for me. So I really like the person I'm becoming in my personality, professionally. I have a more distinctive taste and I know what I like and what I don't like, including in men. So eventually if I end up being in a relationship and I end up deciding to live with that person, yes, there will be some adjustment, but then this adjustment in my lifestyle is going to be something that is uh, something we do in common. It's a convergence because we are an item, we are together, versus me having to compromise with roommates. So for me, roommates are not the same thing as your partner. That's completely different. So roommates does not equal partner. I'm not willing to live with, with other people in an apartment as long as I can afford to get the smallest thing that is a single unit for myself, I will continue doing this. Um, but partnership is a, a completely different thing. Another question that I get a lot is do you feel like you're missing out or that you're being judged or uh, for being uh, a very successful career woman but always single? Um, I think that if I were in Morocco that would that might have been a bit of an issue still just because while Morocco has progressed a lot it is the same thing as, say, Italy or Argentina or the US. Uh, a lot of people will always think of you as, oh, she's so successful, but... And uh, while Morocco is not as bad as some places, like where, um, for example, I know a lot of people... When I, when I used to work in, uh, in research in the US, I knew a lot of brilliant young girls who eventually ended up becoming stay-at-home moms or doing something crafty or like with those pyramid schemes or things like that uh, just because they ended up marrying and having kids. So definitely a big, big, big step down uh, in their career versus their potential because I've known these girls when they were 17 and 18 and 20 and they were all brilliant chemists at the time, chemistry majors. Um, yes, it is sometimes a bit weird to see how how they have all um, kind of changed. And this is not a diss to, to, to the US, obviously, just because I was the only non-American in that program, so all the girls that I know were American. But I, when I look back at all these relationships and I just think um, they, have, they have a different lifestyle now, and every now and then, because you guys know I don't really use my personal Facebook, uh, but I visited once a month or so and I would see their feed filled with their baby pooping and, and things like that. And I'm like, okay, so that's their life and this is their definition of happiness. This is their definition of success. And then I have other friends who are just jumping from conference to conference. So I also know in another context, I know uh, a very accomplished group of people who almost are professional conference goers. So all they do is attend conferences all over the world. They just, they, they got into this circuit and they just uh, get invited to conferences. So uh, one of those guys would be always like, oh, I'm proud to represent Peru for this. And then he takes a photo with the UN guy and then a photo with the Trudeau from Canada and then a photo with God knows whom. And I have also these people in my feed and I'm just thinking, you spend more time attending conferences than doing your philanthropic work. Uh, or um, I have also other people who can do a bit of both, etc, etc. There are also girls from my alma mater, which is an amazing college, but who eventually ended up uh, doing a cooking business or 
traditional um, clothing business a lot of people actually end up doing this so they can study whatever and then they default back to Moroccan cuisine or Moroccan uh, traditional you know um, uh, and things like that be it in Morocco or abroad especially abroad actually um, so yeah you have a, a lot of all of this and so do I feel like I'm missing out on this no but at the same time I try to not be defensive about my lifestyle because what I have noticed is that I have all these friends from these distinct circles who can some of them sometimes can be quite defensive so the girl who's only focused on her three kids and you know like being the the ballet and the soccer practice etc etc can be quite judgmental of the other girl who's actually doing amazing things in Silicon Valley and then the girl in Silicon Valley is like no I'm having the life and you're just wiping poop and, and snot why do you have to do this why do you do that crossfire I for me it's just something that I try to to avoid and I just step back and at the same time I try to understand the position of both people so I'm I'm trying really to to come from a position of compassion and I understand that maybe for that person who with, with the kids she feels that uh, she's being uh, looked down upon by other people because they don't think that the fact of raising kids is worthy enough or that she's just lazing around all day instead of doing something something good and then you have maybe the girl in Silicon Valley who feels that she's looked down upon because she hasn't managed to fulfill the traditional role of finding romance or maybe she has romance and she decided to not have kids by choice or by obligation but then she's always feeling like she's less than just because she didn't uh, have that traditional role in society and then I have friends who are actually stuck in the middle they have a uh, a career and they have kids and then they just looked down on because the career woman thinks oh you know you're not leaning in us uh, well enough and then the the stay-at-home mom is like oh you're not taking good care of your kids and then the, the girl is just like stuck in the middle and I can't be good at anything and so whenever I get any judgment thank God I don't get it and I'm really happy actually that my family is just amazing on that regard um, but if ever I get any sort of, you know, that backhanded compliment, you know, or like those comments, etc., I just try to, to take it from a position of compassion and just feel that if a person feels the need to pass judgment on me, they're probably suffering and they're probably really in so in such a position um, that they feel like they need to spew that poison back. And so if somebody comments about my career or comments about my love life or comments about my kids or something like this, I'm just thinking, but maybe maybe she's just threatened because she thinks maybe she will never achieve what I have achieved. Or maybe she's thinking, oh my God, if Uga is in a relationship with that amazing guy and um, then she gets these kids and... And they also happen to be smart and cute and she has the right support system and she can have it all. And does that make me look bad because I only have this side or I only have that side? Life is not a competition. You, you, you don't have to compare with anybody else because all what you see from you in my life, as perfect as it might seem, is just the part that I'm putting on camera. Is the part that is edited. It's the part that... I'm willing to actually sit through and process, but if I have a, a bad day, for example, I probably didn't feel like taking the camera because I spent it somewhere feeling bad. Or if that blogger that you see, who's always just, oh, life goals and blah and blah and blah, and she's just always taking a photo with us, like a, God knows what, the gelato or something in New York, she probably traveled and had to get in debt and she's sleeping on somebody's couch and she's like wearing very scratchy cold things just to take as many photos as possible in the one week that she's there and she's gonna need to exploit them for three months and she probably never ate that gelato because she needs to take so many pictures with it and you know you don't know the back scene of everybody so just assume that anybody who gives any comment or judgment by trying to make their lifestyle or life choice, or actually sometimes it's not even a choice, just the, the resulting lifestyle that they're in, 
sound better than whatever you're doing, just think about it as if anybody feels the need to compare or anybody feels the need to put you down, it's probably because they're hurting. So don't be condescending about it, as in, oh my God, you probably are so messed up, that's why you felt the need to comment about my kids. So to something like, I really feel for you, I can see that you probably have a sort of malaise, that's why you're, you feel the need to comment. I'm not going to point it out because honestly I'm not your therapist, I have better things to do in life than try to fix you, but I will not let it get to me. So um, protect yourself from all the judgment, but understand that sometimes people ask things out of curiosity, sometimes they ask because they are insecure, and sometimes they ask just because they want to see you uh, be shaky the way they are. So whatever your life choice, just do it. And about the thing, just a parenthesis about the thing on, on, on the kids, some people have fertility issues, some people have uh, miscarriages, some people cannot have kids, etc. And I have noticed that a lot of people will just assume, they will go and ask the question of, when are you guys having kids? That can be so hurtful. And uh, in, it's just so inappropriate. I would, that's a question that I would not ask. Just because I'm like, what gives me the right to crawl up a woman's uterus? You're metaphorically crawling up her uterus, trying to understand what is going there. So I don't go there ever, ever, ever. So <laughs> just a, a side note, just because uh, it's something that I never thought about until I reached that age. But then I have seen a lot of people around me have fertility issues and they're really on edge. Like some of these women are really on edge. Uh, you just mentioned something like, oh, my cat is my baby, and they start bursting in tears because they're like, oh, you're not valuing human life, etc. And then when you see that, you're like, oh my God, chill. Don't be such a diva. But then you realize that they probably have a lot of issues. They went through three IVF rounds, and they're really sensitive about the topic of mentioning babies and things like that. And so you call in a cat or a dog or whatever, a baby, it just for them is so disrespectful given all their efforts and blah and blah. So put everything in perspective and it just will make you accept everything much, much easier. All right, guys. So these were my thoughts on living alone, loneliness, choices in career and family, etc. If you think of any other topics that would be relevant for such videos, let me know that in the comments. I always love like look going through the discussions that happen in the comment section, but also getting inspiration for my next ones. So I hope to see you very soon on my channel. Until then, take care.